one. The Boston Celtics cannot catch a break this offseason. Unfortunately, Robert Williams III is having knee surgery. It's supposed to be out uh, four to six weeks, but you know, you know how that goes. Uh, very likely, it's going to want to slowly wean him back in. You don't want to try to rush or expedite that. Luckily, it's early in the season, so he should be back, uh, you know, a couple months into the season. Uh, the season begins right around the corner. Uh, so it just, it's it's an unfortunate scenario for the Celtics, uh, who don't have a lot of centers currently on their roster. I mean, Al Horford can easily slide to the center position, um, but, you know, that's not ideal for what this Celtics team wants. Uh, they ran him at the four uh, mostly, uh, but he did play five in spots and things like that. Um, and, you know, they could go small. They could work by committee. Um, it just sucks because a team that was just in the NBA Finals with aspirations of trying to get back there this season, you know, they go and get some nice solid pieces and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Brogdon, Malcolm Brogdon, and then also a Danilo Gallinari, who he ends up getting hurt, right? And he's very likely out for the season. And so there were all the talks of like, you know, is Carmelo Anthony coming? Or what are they going to do? You know, are they just going to ride it out? And it looks like, you know, at least at this point, they're not going to do anything, which just, again, it goes into a big problem with the Celtics that I've reiterated on this channel on several occasions. Problem is, is that they are already too reliant on Jason Tatum and, uh, you know, Jalen Brown. And the two of them having to play 40 minutes a night just for the Celtics to win some games, especially come playoff time. And we saw them just kind of get worn down and just kind of get burnt out. And that was the thinking with the, you know, the Brogdon and Gallinari deals, right? You get those, that's perfect. You got a guy that can come in, he can leave Marcus Smart, he can leave, uh, you know, uh, Jalen Brown, uh, he, and then you have Gallinari, he can relieve uh, a uh, Jason Tatum or play the four, Al Horford. You know, you got these guys that can kind of play multiple positions because guys like Brogdon, like, he's a guy that's six five. You know, and has a good wingspan, has good size. Uh, so he could be a guy that could even play the three if you needed him to, um, which he still can. But now that you don't have Gallinari, that hurts. And then on top of that, you now don't have Robert Williams. It just, you're dropping flies before you even get into the season. And that's just not a good sign. And it brings up the concerns of Robert Williams uh, just being an injury prone player. I mean, he's constantly having these little things. Like, is he ever going to be able to be uh, a center that they can count on year in and year out uh, to, to stick with it long term? We've seen many centers uh, that with tons of potential, tons of possibility, uh, just have very short careers because they can't stay healthy on the court. I mean, look at guys like Greg Oden. Greg Oden was considered the, the next sure thing, bona fide superstar. And his numbers were great until he got hurt. Uh, and it just, it's a big problem. And they could look at guys like Hassan Whiteside, right? That could be an easy fix. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins is still out there. Maybe they even go and get both. I uh, I don't think that that would be a terrible idea, right? Because at least DeMarcus Cousins, you get some of that floor spacing. You can run different sets with him. He's a bigger body, especially going up against the Joel Embiid's of the world. You know, have somebody that can, you know, bump around and, and just cause some uh, cause some damage, uh, down low uh, in, you know, spurts. Uh, Hassan Whiteside, again, a guy who can be very effective. Problem with him has always kind of been the locker room issues. You know, him, his his commitment to the game of basketball, his commitment to teams, things like that. There's a reason that, you know, teams aren't lining up to go get a guy like Hassan Whiteside. But I think that given the, the position that the Celtics are in, they, I mean, even with Robert Williams, you'd probably be best to go get another center, you know, rather than standing pat. You'd probably be in a good position to, you know, just have that backup and just get a backup in general. Because even, let's say Robert Williams does is able to come back, let's say four weeks. He's great. He's healthy. He's good to go. Do you trust that he's going to be able to stay healthy for an 82-game season and then come the playoffs? You know, and it would be nice to have another guy down low that can block shots, you know, and, and again, kind of play center by committee. You know, you, you get a Hassan Whiteside, you get a DeMarcus Cousins, you, you have Al Horford, you kind of have those three sharing the, uh, the, the five spot, and then Al Horford also can play the four. 
So that's where you're getting the, the chunk of his minutes uh, throughout the season. And then, you know, kind of, again, it'd be by committee. And then Robert Williams comes back. Then you have that three big rotation, which would be nice. And Robert Williams, you also don't have to play a ton of minutes, right? You can kind of just have him when you need him to, to kind of play big for you. You know, have him in the first and then to close out the game in the fourth and, and just kind of not have to put the wear and tear on him that you would otherwise. It's just, again, it's a, it's a tough spot for the Celtics to be in. You know, and it's just like one thing happens and then another thing happens. And look, this is this is just how it works, right? You, you, you have good seasons, you have bad seasons. Health is always a factor when it comes to these teams. Uh, but the Celtics are very young. They're very good. I think they got a lot of experience from just that playoff run into that finals run. I think that they really could make some noise if all the all the health can get cleared up or if they can just get the depth necessary. You know, I still think that they're the the biggest issue is to to get these two guys that you see on screen time off. You know, I'm not saying that they have to miss games entirely. But you need to be able to get guys. That's why I like the idea of going and getting like a Carmelo Anthony or something like that. Go get another wing player that can give these two more of a break so that way they're not just getting worn down over an 82-game season. Because you're going to be good enough regardless to get into the playoffs. You need these two at their peak, you know, as healthy as can be, 100%. You know, you, you heard the Jason Tatum that he broke his finger uh, or his wrist, I'm sorry, on his uh, on his shooting hand uh, and and stuff like that, and he just was talking about that, and you know whether that's true or not. To me, it kind of sounded a little odd, like really, like that you you were able to play like that, you know, you didn't tell anybody, like you were able to hide that this whole, you know, uh, back end of the season and in the playoffs and in the final. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know why he'd make that up, but it's just it's a little weird. Um, that that would be the case. But even if that is the case, that's more of a reason why you need to get some depth around these two. Because then Jason Tatum wouldn't have felt the need to to have to play, to have to stick it out, you know, to have to ride it out. Because if he had a couple guys that he knew, okay, look, I I can take, uh, you know, a couple weeks, you know, two, three weeks, whatever it is, to, to kind of get my hand right, to get my wrist right, get everything in, in, in order, because I got, you know, Malcolm Brogdon, uh, uh, Gallinari, uh, you know, uh, um, whatever, uh, uh, Carmelo Anthony, you know, something like that. You know, you got these guys that that are on this roster that they can go, but you lose Gallo, they don't sign Melo, which is fine. I can understand that, you know, especially from the defensive end, but I do think that he at least alleviates a lot of what you need from a a shooting and scoring aspect. And I think Boston's team defense is so good that they could kind of mask Carmelo Anthony. I think they're one of the few teams that could really capitalize on, uh, on Carmelo Anthony's flaws, but kind of uh, benefit from, from what he can do with the, with the basketball, putting the ball in the hoop. It's just, again, it's a, it's a weird situation for the Celtics to be in. It's, It's unfortunate you know, because you want to see what this team could be capable of, you know, and, and this is coming from a Laker fan. I am a Laker fan, and look, I have no pity on the Celtics. <laughs> Believe me, I want the Lakers to, to, to break that tie, but the basketball fan in me, the, the unbiased side in me, is like, you know, hey, the Celtics, they have a really good team. They, they have all the components. They have everything they need. They were just in the finals. I wouldn't be shocked at all if they're back there again, but they just keep catching these these you know, them the breaks type thing, you know, and they need to catch a a lucky break. They need to catch a a good break rather than these bad breaks. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. So I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think of this news? Do you think this is terrible? Do you think it's like, no, it's not a big deal. It's only a couple weeks. You know, he misses two, let's say three months at the most just to, you know, have that insurance. They'll be able to win enough games right out the season enough for him to come back, be in full swing of things. Uh, do you think that they should go get a, a white side or go get a uh, DeMarcus Cousins kind of make up for it? And again, you could still use them, you know, even even after. And as, as unfortunate as it may sound, Robert Williams is probably going to get hurt again at some point during the season. 
And if that does happen, then it'd be nice to have a Hassan Whiteside or DeMarcus Cousins because who knows if those guys are on the market come that time. At least you lock them in now and, and you kind of make it work, kind of figure it out. Uh, but, you know, do, do you think that they need to go get another win or two? Do you think that they need to try to figure something out or do you think they're okay the way that they are? I just, again, I worry about the, the, the workload of these two. You know, luckily they're young. Luckily they're, they're extremely talented. But... Still, you know, as young as they are, 82 games is a lot of games, and then you go into the the grind that is the playoffs, it's tough. It's tough for anybody. Um, But anyway, again, however you feel about it, love to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. Quick little shameless plug, go subscribe to my second channel, link down in the description below as it stands Lakers. I am a diehard Laker fan. I love talking Lakers. I could talk Lakers all day, just like I could talk about all sports all day. And I'm sure many of you watching to this point enjoy my commentary, enjoy these discussions. So go check out the Lakers channel. Even if you're not a Laker fan and you just like hearing me talk about stuff and basketball, go over there and subscribe. i link down in the description below. I promise you won't be disappointed. That being said, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, follow by the bell notification, stay up to date with all things sports, join this wonderful community and all of our discussions. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.